Hey, what's going on everyone? Matthew from the therighttrader.com back today with another daily crypto update. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on with the market on a macro level, kind of give you an idea on what's going on with the bigger picture, right? Because I know a lot of you are worried right now. And I just wanted to share my experience, share my, my thoughts with all this stuff. Now, also going to go over my normal schedule. Rayblox, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple, Neo, Vertcoin, Monero, Omisego, Lisk, Cardano, Aonauda, all of those in a technical analysis on TradingView in just a second. Other than that, if you're interested in monthly cryptocurrency buying opportunities or five high return cryptocurrencies for your 2018 portfolio, go check out my premium content. I will probably be dropping a new buying opportunity uh, in the next couple days. And for these five high return cryptocurrencies with the crash, this would probably be the time to get in on these uh, while they're at a discount. So, of course, that's just my opinion. But if you're interested, now would probably be uh, a good time. And other than that, if you want to start cr trading cryptocurrencies, go check out Binance. I always have a link to them as well in the description of this video. So let's get started with the general market update. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what's happening, uh, you know, on a bigger scale as well. So I do want to take a minute to talk a little bit about this because what we saw over the past couple hours was definitely... A bit of a cryptocurrency crash and there have there wasn't any of this uh, for a while right we were really riding um, a wave of optimism and bullishness where we're going up non-stop and of course that has to come to an end eventually and that's kind of what we saw happen here where things started to fall and it kind of just snowballed effect to create this this bit of a crash that we saw um, not much to say, as you can see, I mean, pretty much uh, we're completely in the red here and big percentages, right? 20, 30% usually. So I want to talk a little bit about some, some of my thoughts that I was talking about last night while all this was happening. And the first thing that I wanted to mention was this graph right here. This is, you know, you might have seen before these general market cycle graphs, and it's, it's really funny how these are usually consistently true, right? And and history repeats itself. So posted this graph on Twitter, by the way, I never actually plugged my Twitter. Uh, if you want to go and check it out, there's a link to that in the description of this video. I, I talked a little bit about how I thought that last night we're in the capitulation stage of, um, of the market cycle. And I think what we saw happen, you know, just maybe a few hours ago, right, when, when Bitcoin really dropped even further below uh, $10,000, we were in that that's the spare area, and now we're slowly but surely returning to the mean. And I think that was a pretty accurate, you know, description of what was going on. So always good to have this graph in mind. And also t wanted to talk a little bit about my my calls here for for cryptocurrencies uh, bottoming out, or at least on this current drop, where would be the bounce for all these cryptocurrencies? And I turned out to be pretty accurate. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Uh, Bitcoin dropped all the way down to $9,928. My call was for $10,500, which is basically the low of this candlestick. So it was pretty accurate there. And that's kind of what I made my prediction off of. For Ethereum, my call was, uh, let's see, uh, $872 to $759. Low was uh, $852, based that sort of off this high of this candlestick right here. And for Litecoin, that was my most accurate prediction. I called for the bounce to be at $144, bounced at $146, and based it off the low of this candlestick right here, right? How did I kind of map this out? I just looked at the Bitcoin chart, really, and when I saw everything starting to drop last night, it was around, you know, pretty much where it is now. I saw the, the big, you know, spike dip, the real panic um, that was going to happen, and I just thought, where's the most likely level that it would bounce off of? And I kind of based it on, on the low of this candlestick right here, right, being a, a nice bounce area. And that turned out to be pretty accurate. So I just kind of wanted to share how I made these calls that were pretty accurate because a lot of you wanted to know. So another thing that I wanted to talk about was this right here, uh, post on the cryptocurrency subreddit, what has happened in the past when BTC drops below the 100 day moving average. And as you can see, it usually bounces really nicely uh, pretty quickly after that. So one thing that I do want to point out is if you look back here, right, we actually dipped uh, lower right, I guess, to the 200 day moving average. So you can never really know for sure, but what's pretty obvious um, based based on you know past history is usually the the time to get in is more around this area than at the all time high, right? That's pretty obvious. But just some food for thought. Uh, not going to really 
touch on that more, but that's just my opinion, not financial advice. Now let's get started with the technical analysis side of things and talk a little bit more in, as far as the graphs are concerned, what's going on. Actually, I'm going to start off with Rayblocks here. Rayblocks basically, uh, we'll go ahead and throw on some indicators here, but you have, really have to think macro at this level because a lot of cryptocurrencies are basically just following what's going on with Bitcoin. What's funny, I'm also going to point this out, is that you would think that when Bitcoin drops, altcoins go up, right? And that does tend to happen in certain situations, but it's not always true, right? Over the past day, we saw that a lot of these altcoins were actually tracking what Bitcoin was doing, meaning that when they when Bitcoin started to drop, they dropped as well. And when Bitcoin was recovering, they bounced back as well, right? So for Rayblocks, we can see that coming back towards that 50 R, uh, 40 RSI, um, currently moving a little bit lower, Basically, what happened was we got our big dip, right? Bounced back, consolidated a little bit, and then uh, just just a few hours ago, Bitcoin took another dip, and that's what sent it a bit lower. Will we fall further on, on this current drop? It, it really depends how you look at it, because my call was basically for the bottom to be, you know, at these levels that I called, which were all um, pretty much achieved, which is good because that does show some kind of a short-term bound. And now the question will be. Are we going to see things start to trickle down lower slowly but surely and kind of enter a relatively long consolidation right in the midterm or are things already ready to bounce back up and there's no way to tell my my best guess would be that we're we're not going to come back up very quickly right when you get this type of technical damage and and fear into the marketplace you usually don't see a, a very quick bounce it takes time for for things to clear up and that's because of this chart right here right where there's this return to the mean that has to happen and there's usually a big loss of interest in the market afterwards right the, the mainstream is right over here buying up in these areas right as you can see the public and that's pretty much when where we were in mid-December I would say so now we're all the way over here where the public um, at least the, the general public kind of lost interest in this and kind of got scared off so it's going to take some time before that recovers and that's really what's going to Hold things back a little bit moving forward. As for Rayblocks, it, it's it's holding these this sort of the, the lows that it put in. So I I don't think we're going to see at least um, in the next day much more of a drop. Like I said, it's always possible that the market becomes very weak and things start to trickle down. That everything starts to trickle down. So that's what we can expect there. Otherwise, you know, if there's something bullish that's going to happen, I would say we're going to have to want to make sure that we break out of our downtrend line right over here, right? That's, that's pretty much what it comes down to. So let's go over to the Bitcoin chart now and take a look at what's happening with Bitcoin. So on a lot of these cryptos chart, uh, we lost our uptrend line in the symmetrical triangle formation that a lot of these cryptocurrencies had, which is exactly what we didn't want to see. And it's a pretty bad sign. I'm going to go ahead and put in our, our support level here based on the low that we made. And that's right over here at around $10,000 on Coinbase, it looks like. Indicators, of course, looking bearish, no sign of recovery, no sign of flattening out. Those are some indicators that we will want to see when, when we can expect a recovery. A lot of selling volume, of course. Like I said, now the only thing that would put us back into some kind of bullish territory is we, if we'd be able to get a huge bounce back into the symmetrical triangle formation, which is very unlikely at this point, right? At best, we'll slowly but surely move up, but like I said, there's just too much damage now for that to happen. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see it maybe trickle down a little bit lower and then rebounce off the $10,000 mark, kind of consolidate in this general area a bit longer. I would say that's more likely. Let's go over to Ethereum and take a look. And a lot of these cryptocurrencies are going to be in pretty similar situations. So Ethereum actually got a pretty decent bounce, you know, holding above the middle band right now, trying to get back above the this uptrend line right here. And that's obviously going to be very hard. Not impossible, though. As for the indicators, they basically crossed over to the negative side. So... That's uh, yet another indication that we may not be able to see it really hold above this upturn line. But as you can see, it's trying. So definitely interesting. And it will be a very good sign if it's able to uh, hold above this, this primary upturn line right here. Otherwise, I think we're, we're slowly going to taper off a bit horizontally and, and see some consolidation in this general area once again, right? If things get really bad, it's pretty obvious that we're probably going to come and test this uh, longer term upturn line. So that, that can always happen. Let's go over and take a look at Litecoin now. So Litecoin, pretty big dip as well. Bounced nicely off that low, previous low over here. And now we have a big resistance at $218, which will make it very hard for Litecoin to really get back into any kind of bullish, bullish territory just yet, right? Because even if we were to get back above that $218 mark, it would still have to get above the downtrend line, and that's going to be even harder. So 
I wouldn't count on it for the time being. Uh, and everything I'm saying in this video is just my opinion, not financial advice. If you take a look at the indicator, same thing, um, no real sign of flattening out or anything like that. I'm gonna take a look at Ripple, and Ripple is actually in a very interesting situation in my opinion because it dipped all the way down to 84 cents, and it's currently trading back above the $1 mark. So what I find interesting here is that I'm going to go ahead and put in the, the $1 support level here, but I, I would not be very happy if Ripple started to move below $1. And the reason for that is it, I feel like if Ripple were to move below a dollar, that would signal a lot of market weakness and that things will start to trickle down lower. So if we see it move below $1 and start to hold, I feel like a lot of cryptocurrencies will kind of act in a similar way where they're going to move you know, lower than I would say anybody would want. And as far as the indicators, definitely not looking great, right? Ripple definitely took a really big hit here. And part of that is just because, I mean, look at the increase, right? So a lot of these cryptocurrencies were going up nonstop. And this is the, the flip side of this where we're seeing the sell-off happen from this massive increase. So, you know, there's always some sort of uh, proportions to keep in mind when with all this stuff. Now let's go over to NEO, see what's going on. NEO actually not looking that bad. Obviously, this is one of the cryptocurrencies that was a little bit of a safe haven throughout all of this just because it got a really big breakout on the day that all this was happening. So it also got affected, um, definitely took a hit, even tested the longer term uh, uptrend line right over here, bounced really nicely off that. That's a good sign. And we're actually currently bouncing a bit higher now, moving back towards $150, bounced off the $139 support level. That's a good sign. Still looking okay on the indicators, uh, dip below the 70 line on the RSI. So I would say we have a pretty decent chance for NEO to consolidate in this area in between $139 and $167. If things were to get a little bit worse, probably going to come back and test this uptrend line, trend along that, but I don't think NEO will lose this uptrend line, right? I think it's actually uh, one of the stronger and, and hotter cryptocurrencies, so to say, um, right now in the current situation that the market is, you know, looking kind of bearish uh, for the time being. Now, let's take a look at uh, the next cryptocurrency of the daily crypto update, which is going to be Vertcoin. So let's take a look at Vertcoin now. Vertcoin is took a massive dip. Um, this is exactly what I predicted actually was a break below five dollars and that we're going to come back to our previous, you know, lower range here between uh, basically three dollars and twenty three cents and and this five dollar mark. So that that's what happened with the drop last night, right? Uh, we, we basically ran to this lower range. Do I think we're going to be dropping further than this? Um, I would say that's pretty unlikely. Uh, Vertcoin has already been going down a lot. You can see that it's coming towards that. Um, oversold RSI level so it always can happen you know at that point I mean if it were really to go lower than that it, it would be kind of I would feel like the death of Vertcoin but I don't think that's gonna happen I think that it, it got the as, as low as it could get at, at the time being and it's probably just gonna consolidate in this area we're gonna go over now to Monero and take a look at what Monero has been doing so let's see maybe a little bit of optimism here <laughs> let's take a look Monero also took a bit of a dip here all the way down to $254.57, pulled back down quite a bit on the indicators. And what's funny is that a lot of these cryptocurrencies aren't even the oversold area yet on the indicators. So that could be a cause for concern, but just something to keep in mind, right? Now, I will say that since we are still, um, you know, on a longer term time frame, still in a bullish market, usually going back towards the 50 line is already kind of an oversold area. So you have to think about that as well. But um, moving back basically to some lower ranges here for for Monero, looks like there's a pretty big support level at $300 and kind of expected to consolidate in between $300 and $350. Maybe it'll get a, a further drop. I would say if the market weakens even more, might go back down to $255 and start trading along that range. For now though, I think there's a good chance that we stay over here. And we're going to go over... So what I'm saying for a lot of these cryptocurrencies is that we're probably going to see some consolidation, right? Where it's pretty unlikely that we see this massive bounce right away just because the market took a big hit, right? There was a lot of damage done technically and also as far as the general opinion, right? People get scared off, like I said. So it's going to take a little bit of time. And how long will that take? There's really no way to know. You just have to base yourself off the charts and how things are looking right strength-wise. Strength so Omisigo, really big drop, all the way down to thirteen dollars and thirty-two cents, pretty much half where it was before. So definitely a, a big drop there. 
and uh, at least they cleared a lot of things up, kind of bounced off a support level on the RSI. That is one bullish thing with, with, with what's going on is that at least it kind of resets the playing field, right? And, and resets everything in a bit more uh, reasonable proportion range. It stops with the overvaluation a little bit. So, and I'm not talking just for Misigo, right? I'm talking in general. So for Misigo, uh, really broke out of the uptrend line, pretty big drop from there. Very hard to say what's gonna happen here. I don't really like where it's sitting just because there's not that much support where it's currently at. So probably gonna trade between $14 and $20 for the time being. That is a pretty big range, but it's kind of hard to say because these candlesticks over here were pretty messy. So let's go over towards LISC now and see how LISC has been doing. Let's take a look. Uh, LISC, pretty similar to Omisigo actually. Uh, very, very similar situation. At least it has quite a bit of support at around $17. So that's the range right there and really fell off uh, a cliff on the indicators, right? Especially the MACD and histogram, pretty much confirming the, the bearish turnover here. Let's go over towards Cardano and see what Cardano has been doing. Now, funnily enough, Cardano is actually not looking that bad. This is actually pretty surprising. Didn't even notice, it, notice this. Cardano only dipped um, down to 4,730 Satoshis and bounced off the uptrend line. Already got back above the 5,125 Satoshi support level. And of course, it's still having trouble with that downtrend line. That's probably going to continue just a little bit more until we get towards the end of that, at which point, you know, we're either going to see it break towards the upside or downside. It's actually not looking that bad on the indicators, right? Pretty, a, a bit of a steady decline, but nothing too dramatic. I wouldn't be surprised to see it actually hold this uptrend line here throughout all this mess. So <laughs> maybe one of the, the safer, uh, more sturdy cryptocurrencies out there. Let's go over to IOTA for the final cryptocurrency of the daily crypto update and see how IOTA has been doing. So IOTA got a pretty massive drop, actually lost a big support level, which was $3.41. And because the, the market was so weak um, over the past couple hours, it actually managed to even break below $3, which was really kind of that, that last level before we were gonna see a pretty big drop. And then we broke below that all the way down to $192, now bouncing back a little bit. We're still trading below the lower Bollinger Band, so we might re-enter that range. That's definitely possible. It looks like it's finding support at around $2.65. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to say because with these indicators downtrending and we're still not even in the oversold area, it, it wouldn't be surprising to see them, you know, kind of trickle down into that uh, below 30 line on the RSI and that would be the real oversold area. But I mean, we're still uh, in the lows here, no matter how you, you slice it, I think. What do I see happening for IOTA? I, I definitely think that wasn't the best thing that it dropped below three dollars obviously not much you can do now i would say that um at best we're going to re-enter a little bit higher back towards three dollars and kind of consolidate between two dollars 65 cents and three dollars or we're going to see another dip where we drop back to one dollar 97 cents maybe consolidate in this range or you know if, if this is really going to be some kind of massive drop maybe even go back down to the low of this candlestick over here at one dollar and ten cents things would obviously have to get pretty bad for it to get there but on the last candlestick we weren't that far from there no real way to tell but definitely lost some pretty big support levels here not just for Iota, but for a lot of cryptocurrencies and this is the end of the daily crypto update i hope i was able to help you out with my my insights uh, if you enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you next time thanks for watching everyone